Welcome to ESPN's Monday Night Football launch, engineered by the GMC Sierra. Chargers looking for win one. Jets trying to get to two and one on this Monday night. We say hello and we welcome you to the wrap up of week three and the first football game of four. All right, raise your hands if you had the Bills, the Ravens, the Titans, and the Broncos as the best teams going in the AFC. Probably not. Did you have Miami winning by 23 in New England? Probably not. Did you have 0-2 at home Indianapolis? Here's the bottom line. We're just a couple of weeks in. It's a bizarre AFC season, and that fits right into the hands of the Jets and the Chargers. Look at San Diego. A last play loss, a blown call, and bad defense. And the runner-up last year, 0-2 to start this year. Now, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, the other team in town is the New York Jets. Here they come. And I think we've talked about the Brett Favre hub of a little bit. Oh, well, really? Yeah, he, he's there. They're one and one, but you've never used the phrase Favre and gunslinger as a jet yet. The question is, when are we going to see it? Well, here's what happened last week. They had first and goal from the three, second and goal from the three, and third and goal from the three, and each time, Favre handed the ball off. This guy leads the NFL in history in touchdown passes inside the five. Just why would they hire him to hand the ball off? This is still a work in progress. Eventually, you will see that gunslinger mentality from Brett Favre. I was down the field with him just a few moments ago. You could still see the incredible arm strength that he has for guys to be 39 very shortly. But as I've studied Brett Favre, the one thing I also like about his game is the pocket awareness. It's still there. He feels the pressure, and he can extend the play. Now, it's always been an incredible trait of Brett Favre, the ability to make plays outside the pocket. Here a week ago against the Patriots, you're going to see the pressure up the middle. It does not break. Brett Favre down. He just slides to his left. Once he gets outside the pocket, his eyes are downfield. He's going to draw the linebacker to him, Mike Vrabel, and he knows he's going to take a hit, but he does not waver in his approach. Now, I'm going to spin this around a little bit to show you the receivers coming into play. Brett Favre now outside the pocket, eyes downfield, reading the left side of the football field. He's got two receivers in that area. The Patriots have four defenders. Well, you figure they're outnumbered, not with Brett Favre. Here's the key. The receiver, Chancey Stuckey, uncovers. He knows this is the element of Brett Favre's game that is so great. When he gets outside the pocket, he will locate a wide receiver if he works to get open. So some of the Favre factor is in. One big factor has been missing for San Diego. That's LaDainian Tomlinson. Good first game, but hampered by a big right toe injury last week. We don't think we're going to see 100% of LT, but we will see him in action tonight tonight Jaws their offense has not hurt without LT one guy's making that really possible no question Philip Rivers right now is really the bell cow of this offensive team he is making the plays this offense is now explosive they have nine pass plays at 20 yards or more in two games four touchdowns but in this game tonight I think against the Jets patience will be a virtue for Philip Rivers not to force the football down the field although they're explosive be patient sidebar material if you're a newspaper guy you would love this Philip Rivers as a kid had four posters on the wall Aikman Marino Montana and guess who the fourth one was I would say number four Red Favre he was his idol now he wants to beat his brains out tonight and he plays with some of that far flair as we've seen in the past and even though we are nowhere near Lambeau or the Meadowlands it's still Favre land fours are everywhere and we'll talk more Brett as we get closer to the Jets and the Chargers Letting people. The stage is set for the opening weekend of a new NHL season. And this year, the stars are gathering for the premier events in the great cities of Prague and Stockholm. The NHL returns. Catch all the excitement this October on NASN. the first two games the boys came back and won the 93 Super Bowl then the New England Patriots the 0 2 start and their great run to the Lombardi Trophy and short term memory still working here the 07 <laughs> Giants also started 0 2 had a bad first half of game three and got to the Super Bowl we welcome you into our high definition home you can see the entire telecast in your home on ESPN HD presented by Sears a lot of things to look at in there yeah, look at our great replay action 
Well, Brett Favre on the field one more time. And Monday night, Brett Favre just has a special ring to it. And we've been lucky enough to see some of them in person. So I guess we get to use the Groundhog's Day line, dust this one off. This could, repeat, could be Brett Favre's last Monday night football game. You know, a couple of months ago, you called for a moratorium on me ever mentioning Brett Favre on these telecasts. No, so no, I, there was a limit. I appreciate your leniency in this because who is really more affiliated with Monday Night Football than Brett Favre? And the answer is nobody. This is his 34th start on Monday night, stretching back 16 seasons. So let's go to the videotape and let me do an accent. 1995 at Chicago, the young gunslinger hooks up with Robert Brooks for a 99-yard touchdown, a Monday night record. 2000 at Green Bay, Favre throws a 43-yard pass in overtime to Antonio Freeman, who famously gets the ball on his back like a turtle, holds on, gets up, runs in. 2003 at Oakland, just one day after Favre's father, Big Herb, died suddenly, Favre, heavy with grief, throws for 311 yards and four touchdowns in the first half. How many sons get the chance to say goodbye like that? And last year at Denver, first snap of overtime, Bob throws an 82-yard walk-off bomb to Greg Jennings. Hi, remember me? I'm Brett Favre. Thanks for coming. Drive home safely. He is the NFL's preeminent rock star, the most recognizable face in a league full of helmets. But it seems so weird, Favre now being on the Jets. It's like Paul McCartney is walking down the street, and he passes a band rehearsing in a garage, and he says, do you mind if I sit in? It is just a long and winding road that brings us back to Favre's door tonight. And he's on the door of a bad defense so far in the first two games. Can San Diego get it going? Lanadian Tomlinson, Brett Favre, future Hall of Famers on the field tonight. Jets Chargers kick off next. You've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Football launch, engineered by the GMC Sierra, the official vehicle of Monday Night Football. NASN, the number one source for all your NFL coverage this season. We kick off each week with Sunday NFL Countdown, followed by up to three live games, including the top matchups from across the league. Mondays continue with two first-run games followed by NFL Primetime and Monday Night Countdown with all the top stories from Sunday and all the buzz leading into the live game on Monday Night Football. Don't miss all the latest news, analysis, and features weekdays with NFL Total Access, plus bonus coverage with NFL Game Day, Top 10, and Who Is. And come playoff time, we've got you covered with even more live games as the AFC and the NFC crown their champions with the Wild Card, Divisional, and Conference Championships. And the greatest game of them all, Super Bowl 43, live from Tampa, Florida. Plus your annual trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. The NFL this season on NASN. Showtime! Welcome to the party, all my ratty friends, a Monday night bash on ESPN. Thunder and lightning in the skies out west. The gang in green put the bolts to the test. The pressure is rising, cracking and holding tight. We're gonna tear the roof off San Diego tonight. Preseason favorites in the AFC, San Diego Chargers once again have to dig themselves out of a hole. They hope to go in two, and now Brett Favre and the Jets in town. Jets in split division games. Philip Rivers' team has uh, been knocked off of the division game last week to Denver 39-38. Carolina beat them here 
in week one. The night is absolutely ideal. The temperature just hitting 70 during the day here in San Diego. The Jets have had good kick return teams the last few years. Leon Washington brought it all the way three times last year. He'll be ready to accept Nate Kading's kickoff. Jets winning the toss and choosing to receive. Couple old teams from the AFL, the LA Chargers and the New York Titans when they began. Meet tonight, and off we go from San Diego. From the four, taken back just to the 22 yard line, a big hit. And the Chargers will come up with a good play from Kaysen right out of the start. So here's Brett Favre. If you think about every single game of this NFL season alone, 16 games a week. You add them all up, it's 256 games are played every regular season. This is Brett Favre's 256th consecutive NFL start. What happened to you, George? You only had about 107. How come you couldn't touch Favre? <laughs> I wasn't as durable, Tony. <laughs> Thomas Jones, Tony Richardson are the backs. Gets drive start to 23. <laughs> to the air, first time. He completed to Cotchery. He'll be a yard shy of the 30. Mark him down with a gain of five yards. So Favre and the Jets, really you're surprised when you look at the number 48 pass attempts. Why so few? Well, it's an assimilation into the system. It does take some time, Mike. This is still a work in progress. But I believe tonight you'll see 48 passes from Brett Favre in this game. Not 48 that he's had in two games. Tonight alone, I think you'll see this being Brett Favre's coming out party as a New York he's Jet. He's going to throw 48 tonight. He's going to he? throw 48 tonight. He said he wanted 30 completions when I spoke to him yesterday. Officially a game of six. Pass two. Blitz picked up. And they screened to Thomas Jones. Who's got room and gets to the 39-yard line. Luis Castillo downfield to make the tackle. First down. Well, that's two down and 46 to go if you're keeping track with Ron Jaworski. Those of you who are betting that number. <laughs> the over and under. <laughs> what, what did Brian Greasy throw? 67 yesterday? Wow. For Tampa in the win over Chicago, Thomas Jones had a 100-yard rushing day against Miami in the opener. 70 against the Patriots. Now, uh, throw a look and a run with Jones to the 45. So the Jets moving it on San Diego. What else is new? We'll give you the starting lines for the Jets on the bottom of the screen. And, Jaws, compare what they're doing with Favre to what they used to do when Chad Pennington was the Jets quarterback. Yeah, Mike, for a couple of years when I was watching this Jets offense, it was a lot of motion, a lot of shifting. Since Brett Favre has come in as the starting quarterback here, you see less of that. It's a very static offense formation-wise. Brett likes to see the defense. He doesn't like a lot of movement. Second down and three. And officially four and incomplete short of Tony Richardson. So what does that do with the Jets personnel set? I mean, can, can they be as effective as they were when they were motioning Washington and Jones and guys okay. all over the place? Absolutely. It, it's just something Brett Favre likes at this point in his maturation process within this offense. I believe you'll eventually see a lot of motion, a lot of shifts. Those sorts of things as he moves along in this offense. But Brett right now, much like a Peyton Manning, they like to see the defense stabilized. Always one of the better crowds in the league. This loud house in San Diego. Good protection for Favre. Third and three throw for Dustin Keller is incomplete. Jericho Cotterie was hoping he'd get a pass interference call on the sideline but the Jets after a couple of first downs will punch it away. Excellent job by the Charger defense on the third down situation. Most teams going to go for that short pass get a first down. It was a play action fake trying to get the deep cross. The Chargers did not bite. Good discipline by the defense and they have had trouble with their discipline for the first couple games. You know what the governor says go charge us. Ben Graham is the puncher. That's a whole story in itself. He was cut earlier in the week and signed Yesterday, Darren Sproles, who had a big game last week, no return. LT and the Chargers take over from the 15 when we come back. The NFL is back on NASN, and we're bringing you a live triple header. First up, the Vikings sail into Tennessee. Then the Cowboys host the Redskins and wrap up your football weekend with the Eagles taking on the Bears in Chicago. 
Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. Reports have just come in. More details to come on this breaking story. coverage of the MLB playoffs and the World Series. The NHL season tips off with the opening games live from Prague and Stockholm. And the NFL lands in London as the Chargers and Saints do battle in Wembley Stadium. This October on NASN. My third in the water. <laughs> I was hitting seven at the time. Of course, they played the U.S. Open there this year. It's about 20 miles from here. First down run for Ladanian Tomlinson. He'll gain a couple of yards. It was uh, limited work for LT. Only 40 total yards in the game against Denver last week. A toe injury, 26 rushing, 14 receiving. A toe injury that he had in the Carolina game really limited him last week. Here's what he told us a couple of days ago, that even now, he is, he is not more than 75% effective, 75 to 80% effective. The toe hurts when he plants on it and moves. Antonio Gates had a toe injury at the end of last year. He was the man in motion, and they're running between the tackles with Tomlinson, and they are just shy of the 23rd, about five coming up. They have so many toe injuries on this club. I assume they practice barefoot and people step on their toes. <laughs> When you watch LT, I expect tonight to see more of his running to the left, left side. Normally they do run behind the left side of the offensive line, but he can't stick that right foot in the ground and make that jump cut downhill with the sore right toe. So I expect more running to the left out of LT. I wouldn't run up the middle right now because Chris Jenkins, a nose tackle for the Jets, has been playing phenomenal. I mean, he's just been plugging up the middle. Rivers juggles the snap and is intercepted. Out of the gate, David Barrett, touchdown. David Barrett, who last week had a half sack after never having a sack in his first 122 NFL games, longest drought to ever start a career without a sack, comes against the pick and the Jets lead. Okay, this is the first critical moment now for the Chargers in this game. They have lost two games on extraordinary circumstances. Carolina beat them at the buzzer. And Denver got him because the call was, was bad. To start out this way at home with the threat of going 0-3 and being three games behind Denver, this is the critical juncture for them when they get this ball back. No question, not the start they wanted. Jay Feely, who's in for the injured Mike Nugent, adds the extra point. Just the second interception thrown by Rivers. It's the first National Football League touchdown for the nine-year veteran Barrett and North Turner's team in a seven-point hole. coverage including the playoffs and the 2008 World Series. Major League Baseball only on NASN. Kappas goes in motion, handed to no shot, he ties! 
stretches out, touchdown. And look at the entire Georgia offense coming up. That's the whole team. The whole team is on the field right now. What the heck is that? That's a flag. What are we doing? They're throwing a flag, and I don't think anybody cares right now. Very few mistakes in a lot of situations where the charges have been coming from behind and forced to throw. Uh, makes one there, and David Barrett brings it back. And with Damian Tomlinson and company, have to dig out of another hole here in week three. Like it was one of those plays where the snap was a little bit off, and uh, Phillip had a tough time, you know, he juggled it, and then he had to locate his coverage again. And just one of those plays that looked like it was destined for trouble. Darren Sproles was an eraser last week in the 103-yard kickoff return. Looking for space, a little Sproles gets it out to the 29-yard line. Ahmad Carroll, former Packer number one pick, made the stop. Oh, Rivers sends it back the other way, and Favre's team gets on the board with Brett as a spectator. Very important. For live commentary, news and stats, scrum.com. Instant rugby anywhere. NASN, the number one source for all your NFL coverage this season. We kick off each week with Sunday NFL Countdown, followed by up to three live games, including the top matchups from across the league. Mondays continue with two first-run games followed by NFL Primetime and Monday Night Countdown with all the top stories from Sunday and all the buzz leading into the live game on Monday Night Football. Don't miss all the latest news, analysis, and features weekdays with NFL Total Access. Plus bonus coverage with NFL Game Day, Top 10, and Who Is. And come playoff time, we've got you covered with even more live games as the AFC and the NFC crown their champions with the Wild Card, Divisional, and Conference Championships. And the greatest game of them all, Super Bowl 43, live from Tampa, Florida, plus your annual trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. The NFL this season on NASN. Last year, lost to the Panthers in week one, trailing the Jets very early. 340 gone by here in this first quarter. Take it over at the 29. Tomlinson to the outside. Only a couple of yards. Darrell Rivas cleans it up. Brian Thomas, the first contact. Yeah, Michael showed the interception here. It's a really good job by David Barrett. Really knows what the route is going to be. He plays inside out, and he's one of those safeties that has corner skills. He read the route, and the throw was a little bit behind Antonio Gates. Terrific drive on the ball by David Barrett. A good point there. When he was with Arizona, he was mostly a cornerback, correct? 75 starts. You see, it has uh, been a couple of seasons since the Jets have brought one back for a touchdown. Second down out of the gun for River. Down the middle. That one was almost intercepted. Again, Barrett had his hands on another one. That was intended for Vincent Jackson. But so let's stay with Rivers for a second. Because Rivers and all the Chargers have had to answer all week about being 0-2, especially the way they lost 
to Denver. And what Rivers said was, we can't go out there and play like we're 0-2 trying to avoid 0-3 because then we will be 0-3. we got to play like we're 2-0. and Do those passes, Jaws look like a guy who's playing like it's 2-0? No, absolutely not. Uh, he, he forced one that was intercepted for a touchdown, and he forced a seam throw into double coverage. Not sharp right now. Not seeing the field with clarity. Rivers with time, dumps it underneath on the move with a first down for Buster Davis, who uh, lived up to the first four letters of his uh, name. Kind of a bust in the first round. Not much last year, yeah. but gain it's well. Well, Damian Tomlinson addressing that same subject, a sort of crisis of confidence. He says, you know, we, we can't think that way. But he talked about the fact that his wife said she was nervous about this particular game. And he looked at her and he said, have you lost confidence in our team? I mean, they're getting this from all sides. That They've, I guess, got to have a bunker mentality here. When you're 0-2, you better have a bunker mentality. For the 43. Loading up for the deep ball. Vincent Jackson. Away at the very last by Dwight Lowry. He is starting his first three games because of Justin Miller's toe injury. And Mike, he has played terrific. You'll see Lowry right there in that press position. Now he takes off and he sees the ball in the air. Really good makeup speed. Excellent job by Lowry. Good ball skills. The ball is in the air. As you said a moment ago, this is third start in the NFL. He's been playing like a wily old veteran. As I looked at him on tape, he really is a mature corner. To point out that Justin Miller is again a scratch. Eric Mangini thinking his cornerback is closer. Maybe next week. Second and ten, they go inside with LT and Calvin Pace, the big uh, free agency acquisition in the linebacking core made the tackle as we run through this San Diego offense Ron it has been partially because of the Tomlinson injury see from them yeah but to steal Tony's line you know the stars are out when you look at the San Diego Chargers they fortune for them their quarterback Philip Rivers has picked up his game LT to the bench Darren Sproles in on third and ten Gets bringing four. Rivers got rid of it for a first down and much more. Davis 20 pitches last year, two here on third down. It starts with the offensive line. When you have third and ten, you're going to have to have time to let the play develop down the field. You'll see Rivers in the pocket. Nice, comfortable pocket. He steps up and he feels a little bit of pressure. Really good job maintaining the vision downfield. Look at Phillip looking for a receiver. On third and ten, very seldom will the quarterback run for the first down. He needs to get the ball in the hands of the playmaker. He got it to Buster Davis. Got rid of it just before Vernon Golston got to him. Golston, the Jets' first-round pick, yet to make a tackle in the first two games. Scrolls runs this time and gets... Just a couple of yards. David Harris made the tackle. Let's look at the Jets defense. You'll see the lineups roll through on the bottom of the screen. And one of those headlines, Ron, Chris Jenkins coming in on the nose. Oh, yeah, he really is uh, the guy that leads that defense. You play the 3 4 scheme, three down linemen, four linebackers. You better have a nose guard that can play the position. He has played at a very high level. And also, defense coordinator Bob Sutton loves to bring the heat out of that 3 4 scheme. So when you look at people that fit that scheme, Calvin Pace, Brian Thomas, good fits. Coming off the edge, especially. David Barrett, who has one interception, one near interception, has headed off to the Jets' locker room. Rivers underneath, hauled in by Vincent Jackson, who did a great job to bounce off four Jets. Game nine, first down. Really a nice job once again by Phillip Rivers. He was looking first to the corner route. Then he looked at the back in the flat. He went to his third receiver late, got the completion to Jackson. Really nice job. You see a little cluster formation at the top. You'll see the jam by David Harris. Doesn't get a big enough piece of him. And Phillip, look at the eyes. Look at He's looking downfield. Then to the flat. And here's number three coming across. Really good job by Phillip Rivers once again. So you feel better about him now than you did 45 seconds ago. After the interception, absolutely. <laughs> LT back in the game. Got it from Rivers in space. Heading out of bounds to the 23-yard line. If you're just hopping in, the Chargers, the team that was the runner-up in the AFC, lost the AFC title game in New England last year. 
Opening 0-2. The controversial loss last week on the Ed Hockley call where the whistle was blown and it was an incomplete pass. Not a fumble. Norv Turner very frustrated by what's gone on thus far. Brett Favre and the Jets have only had a few plays. One first down. 22 yards. But an interception by David Barrett has us at Jets 7. Chargers nothing but San Diego driver. Rivers checking with the line of scrimmage. Tomlinson with an opening. Tackled quickly by Kenyon Coleman back out in Southern California. Went to UCLA. Third and a short one or two coming up. I mentioned when they got the ball that it would be a critical drive and perhaps critical you know is a bit of an overstatement with like one minute <laughs> well, from you one Norm, minute yeah, that's I understand <laughs> that but you can see that by, by keeping the ball a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and, and getting a bunch of first downs that's a confidence builder for them obviously I mean if they'd given it up and gone three and out right there the whole momentum of the game could have swung so the way Rivers is playing now and the way they're eating yardage is a good thing for San Diego and their psyche third and two the fullback was covered Rivers scrambles pass incomplete no flag on Dwight Lowry the rookie who came over and timed it we'll see if they go for a 35 yard field goal well, Philip got outside the pocket he gets outside the pocket he's looking for Antonio Gates he was looking for him but Dwight Lowry in excellent coverage you'll see right here Rivers looking for the flat first not there he feels the pressure from pace looking for Gates you'll see the end of the play right here Pretty close. Officially field goal 36, Nate Katie. Fabulous inside of 50. Knocks that one through. Remember, he had the playoff trouble against the Jets back in that 05 wildcard game. San Diego responds with a near six minute drive and a field goal. on NASN and we're bringing you a live triple header. First up, the Vikings sail into Tennessee. Then the Cowboys host the Redskins and wrap up your football weekend with the Eagles taking on the Bears in Chicago. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown this Sunday only on NASN. And Yankee fans are like oil and water. Cubs and White Sox fans at the same dinner table? Bad idea. Despite their differences, fans do have one thing in common. Their heroes all wear Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. set for the opening weekend of a new NHL season. And this year, the stars are gathering for the premier events in the great cities of Prague and Stockholm. The NHL returns. Catch all the excitement this October on NASN. that this year. John Harbaugh's team off to a 2-0 start. We'll see them in Pittsburgh take on Ben, Hines, Willie, and the rest of the Steelers. 8.30 Eastern next Monday night at the confluence of the Three Rivers in Western PA. Well, the Steelers better be working on their pass protections, how to pick up the blitz. They thought the Eagles brought a lot of blitz yesterday. Man, wait to see what Rex Ryan does in Baltimore. They better spend some time in the meeting room this week. So you right. think eight sacks is a lot? Uh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. That's a lot, eight? There were six in the second quarter. Okay. Brad Smith goes back to Leon Washington for the kick. It still comes up short with David Bowens, a defensive or a linebacker, I should say, who put the ball on the ground but uh, gets back on it. Defensive guys don't get the ball very often. <laughs> Hold those deer. <laughs> Wrap it up. Far back on the field after this. Jill, is it? Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, how would you describe us to our overseas viewers? I'm Tony Kornheiser, and we're sort of like America's Bex and Posh. I'm Bex. Bex has a comb over? <laughs> ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. 
Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN. Play action. Williams throws to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. 33-yard strike. Williams drops to throw. To the corner. Williams keeps it up. For live commentary, news and stats, scrum.com. Instant rugby anywhere. Join NASN this week as we reach the business end of the Major League Baseball regular season. The pennant race comes to a close as baseball's finest battle it out for a place in the postseason. Major League Baseball, only on NASN. Five plays, one first down for the Jets. But they lead on the pick six by David Barrett, seven nothing. And Farms fifth throw, seven three, I should say. Dustin Keller with the catch. And a nice move by the rookie tight end to get out to the 35 yard line. Ron will go through the names on the charging defense on the bottom of the screen. They're missing Sean Merriman. What does that do to the profile of this defense? Well, they still stay pressure based. Of course, when you lose a great player like Sean Merriman, you lose an awful lot. But they want to get after the quarterback. That's what they're all about. However, they have not been getting to the quarterback in the first two games. 33 blitz in two games, no sacks. They've got to play better than that. They've got to pressure Fred Favre, or it'll be a long night. You saw their defensive coordinator take the trail there. These defenses have started slow the last couple of years and come on great at the end. Thomas Jones the first down to the 37 yard line. Well talk about last year that great finish of the season. They ended up with terrific numbers in terms of being stingy to score upon. Week one Carolina 26 points 388 yards. Merriman then leaves goes to get the knee surgery in Miami last week. And boy, they give up 39 points and almost 500 yards to the Broncos. You mentioned Cottrell. Cottrell's taking heat in this city for the lack of pressure on opposing quarterbacks and the defense falling down like this so precipitously. Couple of tight ends and the Jets go empty. It was thrown for Jones and Cromarty drops the interception. That's some of the miscommunication there with Favre and his would-be receiver. Cromarty, who had many interceptions last year, 10, drops one for the second consecutive week. Well, Cromarty is what we call a clure in the business. He's going to read the quarterback's drop. He did a terrific job of looking in the backfield, reading the drop of Brett Favre. It should have been a touchdown for the Chargers. Cromartie could not hold on. He had a tough game last week. Rebounded thus far. Brandon Marshall torched him in Denver for 18 reception. To the ground and Jones. Ball came out. San Diego pulled it out. Picking it up is Quentin Jammer. To the 15-yard line, tackled by Jericho Cotchery. Third turnover forced by the Chargers defense this year. They led the NFL last year in takeaways with 48. They were way ahead of everybody else. They led the NFL in interceptions with 30. It was an opportunistic defense last year that gave the offense the ball regularly. And if they do it again like this, they're in field goal range ready. Well, Tim Dobbins did a heck of a job of ripping that ball out. And every day, defensive players are coached. When the tackle is made and he stopped to rip that football out, Dobbins obviously paying attention to linebacker coach Ron Rivera. Starting from the red zone with Tomlinson. He gets about two or three yards before Calvin Pace 
can make the tackle. Uh, let's credit Derek Smith on that fumble too. Smith was the one who was holding Jones and allowed Dobbins to take it away. And everybody talks about the absence of Merriman. They're also missing Stephen Cooper, the linebacker, who was suspended for the first four games, testing positive for a banned stimulant. And the inside linebacker play misses Cooper's thump, and they get a big play out of that position with those two guys there. That's a big play for the Chargers. Fullback Mike Tolbert is the man in motion. He had a big reception last week. 67 yarder. He's an excellent receiver, Mike. Rivers. Tomlinson couldn't hang on. He was about to get banged by Eric Barton, the former Raider. We'll have third down coming up. On this Jets defense in a passing situation, Chris Jenkins normally wouldn't be on the field. That nose tackle makes a difference up front, but he also has a back injury, so he has been out the last series. And David Barrett, who had that interception for a touchdown on the Chargers for a series, he has a shoulder injury. So the Jets defense banged up here in the early going. Against his three by one set, three receivers to right, one left. They like to work the corner backside of the single receiver set. Third and seven with some pace on it to Davis. Big factor here tonight. Buster Davis tackled by Barrett is back in, but a San Diego first down. I think all three of Davis's receptions have come on third down. Excellent route designed by Norv Turner out of that cluster formation. Three receivers to the right. He's dragging one receiver underneath into the vacated area. And Buster Davis doing a really good job of reading the coverage, finding that void in the defense, and Phillip Rivers finding him. What's your play right here, Joel? Well, they're going to run it to the right here. How's that for a call, Tony? Run it to the right side. Well, they've got one of the great touchdown rushers in the history of the NFL, Tomlinson. Rivers lost the ball, ended up getting it back in his hands, and will gain positive yardage. So once on a shotgun, once on a uh, snap right under center, Phillip Rivers couldn't hang on enough to finish the play. It was a run to the right side, but not the one I expected. This is two weeks in a row. We saw Tony Romo not handle the ball last week. We saw Donovan McNabb not handle exchanges last week. Rivers has now done this twice. What are they coding the football with? <laughs> what, what exactly is going on here? Well, there's no excuse with that. The teams do have the whole week to break footballs in. Second and goal out of the backfield. The fullback, Mike Colbert, touchdown. The overriding theme all week for the San Diego Chargers was this sense of urgency. They come in here at 0-2. Within the first minute or so of the game, right, they're down 7-0. They've now had two successful scoring drives, and, and you can exhale at this point if you're a San Diego fan. I don't think you've got to exhale often, but you can exhale at least once. <laughs> Mike Tolbert's first National Football League touchdown after the fumble by Thomas Jones. Seven nothing. They come back with back-to-back -back scores. That time, the Thomas Jones fumble put them in good position, and the Chargers add to that every game with a touchdown run that they've had for the last five and a half seasons. You know, Tony, you talked earlier about Philip Rivers getting off the slow start, interception for uh -huh. a touchdown, squeezing the ball in the coverage. I believe one of the great characteristics of a quarterback in this league to be great is you have to have amnesia. When you make a mistake, when you're throwing an interception, when you're playing poorly, forget and move on to the next play. You can't do anything about the previous play. Can we Brad Smith to take us back from the six for the Jets? Former Missouri quarterback who's done a nice job uh, in a receiving role for the Jets. Takes it out to the 31-yard line. Key plays so far. Rivers, the early bobble of the shotgun, picked off by David Barrett first 
National Football League touchdown, and Brett Favre out to get his defense going after their big play, but his offense gave one up. Should have lost it on an interception a couple of plays before this. Then Thomas Jones has it stripped away. Quinton Jamma returns it to the red zone, and Rivers throws to the fullback out of Coastal Carolina. The former Chanticleer, Mike Tolbert, with his first NFL touchdown, gets you up to where we are right now. Leon Washington checks into the game for the Jets and takes the pass from far. Able to elude the one tackle, but Giles Tucker, the replacement for Sean Merriman out with that knee surgery, makes the tackle, game of about five. Yeah, and the Jets have to get Leon Washington involved in their offense a little bit more. They don't have the really deep, explosive threat at wide receiver. They need to get some speed on the field. Leon Washington brings them that speed. Get him the ball in space like they just did on a bubble screen to the left there, but he needs more touches. Play 11 will be pass number eight. And Favre completes his third to the first round pick out of Purdue. Dustin Keller to midfield. Michelle Tafoya on the sideline with us tonight. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Mike. Well, it is truly odd to watch Brett Favre come to the sidelines after a drive. I mean, he sits down and immediately is surrounded by assistant coaches, backup quarterbacks, and it's as though he's getting a crash course in the offense every time. He's studying Polaroids, listening intently as he gets advice and input. It's been a long time since Brett Favre has had to get that kind of counseling on the bench, Mike. Oh, Michelle, what did he tell us all last Last night, he's taking the playbook home. Hadn't done that in a while, a long while. Shotgun run will go nowhere with Leon Washington. Giles Tucker, give me a mini Merriman <laughs> celebration as he makes the tackle. That should bring the first quarter to an end. It's kind of a weak Marion, though. Sean Merriman. Merriman did it right. And Sean's watching down in Florida where he got his uh, surgery on his knee done a week ago. Well, the flip sides at midfield at the end of the first quarter. The Jets are throwing more. San Diego has more points. 10-7 into the first. swings and it's a high drive deep to left field way back there it's gone Benji Molina with a game winner and the entire team pours out of the dugout waiting for Benji as he crosses home plate they swarm Molina and the Giants get a win that they needed Benji Molina the hero tonight the NFL is back on NASN and we're bringing you a live triple header. First up, the Vikings sail into Tennessee. Then the Cowboys host the Redskins and wrap up your football weekend with the Eagles taking on the Bears in Chicago. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown this Sunday only on NASN. Back on Monday Night Football, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Michelle Tafoy on the sideline with us, Mike Tirico. Guys, it's uh, been an adjustment uh, about, uh, what, seven weeks ago. Eric Mangini is Brett Favre dropped in his uh, quarterback room and now coach him up to what you do best. Yeah, and it still is a work in progress. I know uh, we're in a world now where we want instantaneous results, but it's very difficult learning an NFL offense. And, you know, Brett Favre comes from a system where they use, you know, basically a, a, a sentence to call a play. All of a sudden he goes to a digital system, and he's got to transform everything from one system to another. It takes time. He's very limited in what he's using right now. Second and 11 begins the second quarter. And Favre trying to squeeze one in. Intercepted by Cromartie, who's got room. Goodbye, Antonio Cromartie. Touchdown. Man, 
intercepted Peyton Manning three times last year and had maybe his worst NFL game of his brief career last week against Denver. Takes it back 52 yards. And the extra point makes it a 10 point San Diego lead. Well, Antonio Cromartie has incredible ball skills. You'll see it here looking right comes back late to his left there's a pressure up the middle from Wilhelm and you see Cromartie when the ball is in the air you know he battles Coles for the football right there reaches over the top tips it up in the air great focus on the football wasn't happy with just breaking it up he goes for the interception now you want to be Brett Favre in the pocket you see it just tosses it out to the left a little bit off balance almost far like but pressure in his face now he knows he's in trouble not a good feeling if you're Brett Favre there's an upside with Favre that he can stretch the field more than Chad Pennington, that he brings unbelievable credentials, that he had a great year last year, and he's had a thousand great years, and there's a downside. The downside is that he throws a lot of interceptions, and that he and he will try and put the ball in the narrowest possible spot. But that time, it just looked like Cromartie jumped over Coles, which is bigger, like getting an offensive rebound and then putting it right back up. Well, you have a six foot two inch Antonio Cromartie and, and a five foot eleven inch, you know, Lavernius Coles, and you're right. Tony just jumped over his back and and Cromartie's also got those long arms you know he remembers a lot of reminds me a lot of uh, Albert Lewis the, the great corner with the Kansas City Chiefs he has that kind of skill you know and you, you see him he can vertical leap is good the hands are good just a, a, a tremendous cornerback yeah he all did the have a bad game last week but he's he's making the plays all tonight. the plays tonight interceptions in front of him. 17 points for the Chargers in less than six minutes Leon Washington the return from the goal line great kick returner Washington has the kicker Washington player has an angle on him can he get to it clean is Gordon coming it back is Washington all the way to the four Antoine Payson saving the touchdown did I mention that all the big plays were interceptions and fumbles <laughs> yes I may have been premature how about a kickoff return is, is this a repeat of Philly yeah. Dallas last Monday night well, that would be good wouldn't it oh yeah just score each time the Jets have had great kickoff returns the last few years Great job by Washington cutting it back and Payson didn't give up to make the play whether it was Justin Miller in 06 or Leon Washington with three last year. Watch this sweet move. Right through the right. hole there. Woo. Now remember Jets inside the five and their controversial first and goal play calling last week. They ran it three times from the three. They'll run it with Thomas Jones to the three yard line. Well, well Tony, I guess do? Well, this is what, I, I okay, they got in this trouble last the problem was last week. You know, however, you know, sometimes you got to block people. Last week it wasn't, you know, when you have access to the results in play calling, it's easy to be critical. Although I will be critical of the play where they ran the third time. Brett Favre to hand the no, ball I, off I, repeatedly I would, inside I, the tank. They spread the field here. He's in the shotgun. This is either going to be a draw or he's going to throw it. That's simple. Second and goal, Favre kept it alive to the back of the end zone to Coles. Touchdown. Everyone in New York is happy when they see Brett Favre drop back in the shotgun on second and three and throw a touchdown well, They pass. didn't do it last week. If I, I hope I'm not mistaken on this. I think that's the 98th time he's had a touchdown pass inside the five, and I think that's an NFL record. Most but I, I could be off by 50 on that. <laughs> but that's what they wanted last week, and they got it this week. Of course, guys, much has been made of the relationship with Lavernius Coles and Chad Pennington, how close they were. Coles took the acquisition of Favre that led to the trading of Pennington very hard. It's the first time they hook up for a touchdown. Extra point added by Jay Feely. This is like Dallas never ended last week, guys. Good. 31 scoring. 31 points in 16 minutes and 10 seconds. These guys look fantastic. I'm so proud. Join the Reebok Hockey Revolution. Visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. NASN, the number one source for all your NFL coverage this season. We kick off each week with Sunday NFL Countdown, followed by up to three live games, including the top matchups from across the league. 
Mondays continue with two first-run games followed by NFL Primetime and Monday Night Countdown with all the top stories from Sunday and all the buzz leading into the live game on Monday Night Football. Don't miss all the latest news, analysis, and features weekdays with NFL Total Access. Plus bonus coverage with NFL Game Day, Top 10, and Who Is. And come playoff time, we've got you covered with even more live games as the AFC and the NFC crown their champions with the Wild Card, Divisional, and Conference Championships. And the greatest game of them all, Super Bowl 43, live from Tampa, Florida. Plus your annual trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. The NFL this season on NASN. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Olive Garden, when you're here, your family. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Find out at ups.com slash whiteboard and Acura, Acura, advance. Always classy, San Diego. As the sun sets here on a Monday night, the first night of fall. It's the greatest, the greatest city. It is. Every time. Wow. Why, why, why don't you live wow. here? It's just, you think the same thing over and over. Good movie reference. Thank you. Very good. Darren Sproles, who uh, followed a Bronco touchdown last week with the franchise record tying kickoff return. He'll try to respond to Leon Washington. Jay Feely's the kicker. ESPN first takes Jay Feely. A panelist with Skip Bayless on a regular basis. On Onside kick attempt, and it's caught by the Chargers off the deflection at the 45. So the Jets. You see Mike Westhoff with the cane there. He's the special teams coordinator for Eric Mangini. One of two. He was hoping that they could catch the charges with a surprise, and they did not. I know it didn't work. It was a cool idea. Cool Legadu idea to try it right Legadu here. Legadu Nane is a very tall player, able to deflect it from Wallace Wright, the wide receiver, to try to get the deflection. And it was recovered by Marcus Harris of the Chargers. So Wallace Wright had a chance to make that yes. catch. The pop-up kick is tough. Wright had a chance. Nationwide Series, the Kansas Lottery 300, this Sunday only on NASN. Fires touchdown! Amani Toomer on a post pattern. Pumps, looks, throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Amani Toomer. Walk in the back of the end zone. Nobody open now. He's it. Toomer's open downfield in the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! Throws off the back foot. Man, they're caught! Touchdown, Toomer! Pumps, looks, throws left. Caught! Touchdown Giants. The 50th career touchdown catch of Amani Toomer. Throws it into the end zone for Toomer. Makes the catch. Touchdown. He got his feet down. So that's a double helping of live NCAA football. With College Bowl on the side. ESPN 360. Whenever you're online, you're at the game. The stage is set for the opening weekend of a new NHL season. And this year, the stars are gathering for the premier events in the great cities of Prague and Stockholm. The NHL returns. Catch all the excitement this October on NASN. Exceptions, a fumble, 94-yard kickoff return, onside kick attempt. All in the first 16 minutes, 15 seconds tonight. And the Chargers take over for the second time on the Jet side of the field. Rivers gives it to Tomlinson, tries to turn it to the left. 
Sione Bua, who's uh, on the nose for the Jets, came out of there with a Chargers helmet <laughs> as he was <laughs> dealing with the blocking against Tomlinson, only a gain of about two yards. Everybody expects so much from the Chargers offense, and it's good. But if Gates is hurt, if Tomlinson is hurt, I mean, what are they really what are they really supposed to do? If Tomlinson is at 75% of himself, what's he supposed to do? He's got a lot of weapons to deal with. Phillip Rivers has picked it up despite those injuries. It's a three-man rush. Swings it out to Tomlinson. Chased down by the second-year starting inside linebacker David Harris. LT's right near the first down stick. And uh, we talk about Gates. You know, we mentioned Tomlinson went to detail about his toe injury against Carolina that lingered into last week against Denver. Antonio Gates' toe injury is still from the end of last year and the playoffs, and he had surgery on his toe. And he told us in the preseason, it's like, I can't believe a toe has done this much to me, but he's played and has eight catches first two games, but not 100% just yet. Oh, Mike, he's not close to what he was. He's, he's a month, maybe two months away. You just don't see the separation when he runs his routes. He's down at the bottom of the screen, and Tomlinson runs to the area where Chris Jenkins usually is, but the nose tackle is still out for the Jets with the back injury, so they pick up a first down. You know, we should mention, you know, Marcus McNeil is back at that left tackle position. You know, a couple years ago, his rookie season, he had a tremendous year, and LT had great runs to the left side of this Charger offense. I think as you're going to see a healthy McNeil in the offense, you'll see more runs to the left side. McNeil, two years in the league, two Pro Bowls. Brandon Manamaliuna in motion and blocking for Tom Woods. He's able to get about four yards on that carry. You mentioned the toe injuries and how odd it is that such a small little part of your body can disable you. Remember Jonathan Ogden couldn't play. A massive guy. Yep. In a Pro Bowl a hundred times. Couldn't play because of a toe. Deion Sanders famously had turf toe. What's the most important injury in college this year? Ohio State running back Beanie Wells, right? Mm -hmm. Toe problem. You never, it's too small for it to matter, but it becomes the Achilles heel of your foot. <laughs> the, you great, know. the great Jack Lambert's career. Turf toe at the end. Chris Jenkins, the nose tackle, headed to the locker room. Rivers with time down the middle. Touchdown, Chambers. <laughs> 27 yards. Chambers was wide open from the snap of the ball. He ran down the middle of the field with his arm up in the air. It took Phillip Rivers a second to find him, but he did. The play action fake held the linebacker. It must have been a blown coverage. It should have been a safety over the top. You'll see the play action to Ladanian. You have to believe there should have been some help over the middle. David Harris probably, but he bit that play action. You just can't let a Chris Chambers run down the middle of the field untouched. Fifth consecutive game with a touchdown catch for Chambers, who already has four in the first two and a half games. Jets came in here, and everybody on San Diego said they don't give up big plays. They don't give up plays ever. They keep giving up big plays, don't they, tonight? The NFL is back on NASN, and we're bringing you a live triple header. First up, the Vikings sail into Tennessee. Then the Cowboys host the Redskins. And wrap up your football weekend with the Eagles taking on the Bears in Chicago. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. Throws it down. Cut by Boston College. I don't believe it. Touchdown, Sun Devils. The snake does it again. Frost to the middle. Juggle. Diamond touchdown, Nebraska. Davidson on the deflection. Touchdown. Touchdown, Michael Jenkins. Holy Buckeye. For Wilson NFL and GST footballs and much more, visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. October on NASN. We've got great live coverage of the MLB playoffs and the World Series. The NHL season tips off with the opening games live from Prague and Stockholm. 
and the NFL lands in London as the Chargers and Saints do battle in Wembley Stadium. This October on NASN. Kick for the Jets does not work as the Chargers punch him right back in five quick plays and 44 yards. The Charger touchdown set up by a fumble recovery, the interception by Cromartie, and the inability to recover the onside kick. 24-14. Washington will take another shot at a good return. Cannot get to the outside that time. Tim Dobbins makes the tackle. The touchdown. Well, you'll see it right here. There's Chris Chambers. He's going to attack the middle of the field when these safeties divide. There's a big void in the middle of the field that Chambers gets to because the middle linebacker, David Barrett, did not get to his deep middle responsibility. Once those safeties divide, someone has got to take the space in the middle of the field. Philip Rivers read it beautifully, as did Chris Chambers. He was running down the field with his arm up in the air. That's tough cover for David Harris to get that far back, isn't uh, it? Of course it is, but that's his job. Wow. In the middle linebacker, you divide those safeties, you got to haul your butt back there. Far from the Jets, take over from the 17. Open is Lavernius Coles to the near side. Caught a touchdown earlier. The Marty tackles him after a gain of three. Well, this is the type of game now. It's getting into a little bit of a throw ball game. You know, we have the magic of Favre. We've seen it through the years. These are the kind of games that Brett loves to get into. He's dropping back and slinging the ball all over the field. But does he have the deep threat no. like he had in Green Bay? No, there, there's not a speed guy. Yeah. Brian Schottenheimer's going to have to design big plays for this offense. Second and seven throw to Tommy Jones. Shakes at the sideline. A nice job to get the first down as he lost Sean Phillips, the linebacker. You talked about how far, but throw 48 passes tonight. He may throw them in the first half. He may have to. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is this is the jeopardy, isn't it? I mean, this is where you say to yourself, if you're a Jets fan, yes, we love Brett Favre. Yes, we want Brett Favre. But every once in a while, we wonder, is he is he going to complete it to our guys? Is he going to complete it to somebody else when he's playing from behind? And you know he has to throw all the time. Brad Smith in the game as a receiver. Good read of the play right from the start by Marcus Harris. Outside linebacker makes the tackle. We talked so much about Sean Merriman and his impact on this charge defense. I talked to Sean uh, just about a half hour before we went on the air tonight, and he's down in Miami after getting his surgery. Things look well for an on-time recovery to get him back next year. He said it was very difficult to watch last week and the inability of anybody on the defense to come up with the big play. That's what he did so often. No back to the playoff games, Tennessee and Indianapolis last year. That's where the Chargers have to step up without Merriman, in addition to pass rush. Second and nine, the blitz picked up by the Jets. Can Favre make something happen? Incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver, covered by a good cornerback, Quinton Jammer. Charger shaken up in the backfield. Luis Castillo is the player injured for San Diego. Their outstanding defensive end out of Northwestern. So as they look at Castillo, will step out. Join NASN this week as we reach the business end of the Major League Baseball regular season. The pennant race comes to a close as baseball's finest battle it out for a place in the postseason. Major League Baseball, only on NASN. XGames.com is the year-round online destination for action sports from around the world. We've got the latest vids, bios, photo galleries, and news 24-7, 365. 
moto, BMX, skate, rally, surf, and the exclusive home of the X Games. If it happened in the world of action sports, it'll be on xgames.com. Bookmark it and log on early and often. Anytime, any place. xgames.com. NASCAR Nationwide Series, the Kansas Lottery 300, this Sunday only on NASN. Turn with the uh, San Diego fans, Luis Castillo, the injured player, their uh, starting defensive end, their first round pick out of Northwestern back in 05. Let's take a look right side of your screen. Yeah, Luis Castillo, number 93, being blocked by Thomas Jones, and you'll see the knee bends backward, and that's not the way that knee was created. Castillo's you know, signed through 2014 after being extended five years with the Chargers. Uh, born in Brooklyn, a New York-born guy who uh, went to high school in New Jersey. The Chargers have. Uh, a lot of different names on the field for defense compared to when they were good at the end of last year. So they hope that uh, this is not a serious injury with Castillo. And it's good to see him walking off under his own. Uh, Mike, it's incredible that he's walking off the field that way. I mean, that looked like a very serious knee injury when I first looked at it on the replay. And there's Ted Cottrell. He's already thinking, boy, I got enough guys going down. I got to mix and match more at that defensive end spot. You know, Ted's been under fire a little bit, Mike, as you said earlier, because they have defense has not played well this year. But you know, they struggled in the beginning of last year, and they came on strong. So, you know, we all want these instantaneous results. Give them a little time. They allowed over 30 points in four of their first eight games last year. And have given up 65 in the first two. Favre. That pass is intercepted by Eric Weddle, the safety, who stayed in bounds, so the play is still alive. He's knocked down, running into his fellow safety, Clinton Hart. That's the second time far through to an area where no jet receiver was. And another New York turnover. And, 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 and Mike, this is just communication breakdowns with Brett Favre and his receiving court. You may know the play when you draw it in the playbook, but once the ball is snapped, you have to make adjustments. Here you can see the receiver running to the inside, Jericho Cotri. Brett throws the ball to the outside. These are adjustments that are made after the ball is snapped. It's clear that the Jets' wide receivers and Brett Favre are not seeing the field through the same eyes. Whose fault is it in that case? I, I couldn't tell you because yeah. I don't know the adjustments they make to their patterns when but they get it. Are you suggesting get, that there it's the receivers who have the obligation to make the adjustment? No, both have to be on okay. the same page. Chargers, third consecutive takeover in Jets territory in Sione Bua tackles Ladanian Tomlinson that's such a good point Ron because so much of the far moments have happened on ad lib plays extending plays as Weddell comes up with the interception of that one and when you have situations like that the interception from Marty should have had nobody's in the area it could very well be far not knowing the offense oh, exactly. yet. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not going to put the blame on some because I don't know their adjustments but clearly the communication is not there. Stretching it out to Tomlinson. First time we've kind of seen a little bit more of a burst from LT. Yard shot of the first down. Mike DeVito, backup defensive end, makes the tackle. This is what everybody talked about, though, when Favre went to the Jets. How long would it take him to learn an entirely new si system with, you know, different play calling letters or numbers or whatever? You would think, at least I would think, by the third game, there'd be more for him. You're shaking your head no. No, I'm shaking my head no, because I believe it takes years to complete. He doesn't have years. years. I know that. But, you know, every, like I, said, I, it, it, I believe that's how long it takes. You talk to coaches around the league, they will echo that same sentiment. You may learn the plays, but to execute them and adapt to the change after the ball snap, I believe it takes years. Well, if it takes years and you've just hired a guy who's about to be 39, <laughs> you I, made a I foolish agree. investment. I right. agree, you don't you don't have years. So I would think that somebody of that stature who comes right in, that receivers would talk to him and, and know what he wants and what he likes and 
and it wouldn't be so evident that they didn't. Well, we saw Michelle's report. She was talking about what was taking place in the sideline. When did you ever see that with Jeff Favre? Darren Sproles takes it to the 26-yard line, giving with Indian Tomlinson a spell for a moment. And the Chargers are moving it pretty well on this Jets offense. You know, this uh, this Charger offense right now in this quarter is looking like the Charger offense of old, sustaining, methodical. But the first couple of games, yeah, maybe because the scores in those games, they had to be kind of a throw ball explosive team. But right now, they've kind of kind of found their water level right now. Good balance on offense. Made easier without Chris Jenkins on the nose for the Jets in the locker room with that back injury. Rolls able to get the first down at the 20 yard line. David Harris, David Barrett with the tackle. Chargers chance to extend their 10 point lead, and Sproles has done a very nice job spelling Tomlinson through this uh, couple of weeks with the toe injury for LT. I'm not sure that you can overstate this. They're 0 and 2. <laughs> they don't want to go 0 and 3, and they're at home, and everybody in that building this week knows that this. This is a critical game. For well, it's them. a critical game for the Jets. You think they want to go one and two? Not as good. Okay. Tomlinson try to get to the outside. Sean Ellis combines with Eric Barton for the stop. And uh, you talk about the patience of North Turner's offense. This is a team that throws it very well, but establishing that run is so important for San Diego and getting Tomlinson going in the first half because you don't know if you're going to happen for the second half. He told us uh, Saturday. By the second half, that toe may start to bother me like it did last week, and I may not be able to go. So I give him as many snaps as I can out of, this, out of the gate. You just saw you know, the number of run versus pass, 17 run, 13 passes. Good balance right now. Five in the pattern. The fullback, Tolbert, gets it. Mike's tackled by Arch Barton. <laughs> being near the first down forward progress, marked right around the 10. <laughs> such a great advantage when your fullback can be a good receiver you know as the, the defense expands you got that fullback that you can check out the backfield those angle routes and check downs and catch the football and give you positive yards Tolbert is a guy that they love as a receiver especially when they get in this red zone area they like to use them in those angle routes match against a linebacker And Lorenzo Neal in that job four-time pro bowler we'll see him next week with Baltimore he couldn't catch Mike <laughs> he can block like that. Finishing your point. <laughs> giving him a different dimension. San Diego timeout. Third and short coming up. State college football primetime 9 Eastern Thursday night ESPN out of the San Diego call timeout third and one Tomlinson not a lot of ground gain 
end, but might be enough for the first down as Kerry Rhodes and Eric Barton made the stop. I believe he got just enough for the first down. That'll be first and goal. And a penalty free first half to this point. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> you, you like that in-depth analysis? Thank you for that, yeah. Short, but, but to the point. <laughs> Tomlin's in 14 carries, guys. 41 yards tonight. And gets five more. Tripped up. You, you can almost sense San Diego just pounding away the Jets defensive line and controlling the line of scrimmage too. That is the key. Without Chris Jenkins, the Jets defensive line is struggling right now. Well, everybody says he was the big change. They paid him $20 million guaranteed. They put weight clauses in his contract. He could make up to $750,000 by making the weight prescribed in the contract. If he's not there, if he's the big change, he's not there. Come on. And he was dominant the first two weeks. and He was playing at a very high level. Tomlinson marked down, shy of a six. Rivers, Gates, got it. Touchdown. On the rookie, Dwight Lowry. Well, when you have a tight end at 6'4", 260 pounds, match against 5'11", advantage, D'Antonio Gates. Terrific throw by Phillip Rivers. You'll see the move right here. Lowry at that inside position. This is the old meet me at the corner route. Just run to that corner and I'll throw the football up. And I say meet me at the corner because uh, an old coach of mine, Sid Gilman, who had uh, great success here in San Diego, that's how he would teach it. Meet me at the corner. Well, that's three touchdown passes for Rivers in the first half. Nine in the first three games and another jet mistake. This time the interception turns into the touchdown. So uh, nine touchdowns, two interceptions for Rivers in this young season. Rivers is very much revered by his teammates in San Diego because of what happened last year in the final playoff game where he ended up playing most of the game on a torn ACL. And, Jaws, you've been in locker rooms. What, what does that mean when people look at a quarterback and they think that he will withstand any amount of pain and go out and play? Well, it, it's invaluable because it, it, it sets a tempo for the football team. You know, you watch other players. You see LaDainian Tomlinson. You know, he's got the toe. You know, he's gutting up. He's going out there. You look at Clinton Hart, the safety. He had surgery Monday, you know, on his wrist. He's back out there playing. I think when your quarterback shows that that physical toughness, because you always have to be mentally tough in this game. We spoke about amnesia after the interception. He rebounded from that. But players look at you differently after you, you come back from an injury like that, or you play with an injury with like you play with that torn ACL. In the I mean, nobody, nobody plays without he went out yeah. and played. You win in the locker room, right. and Phillip Rivers won in the locker room. The Jets have turned it over three times. It's turned into three San Diego touchdowns. 31-14. Ahmad Carroll has gone back with Leon Washington. Brad Smith went back to the locker room. And another nice return. Washington seeking the outside. He makes such good smooth shifts. Pulled down as Hating caught up with him. The kicker at midfield. Great field position for far. 45-yard return. Brown takes us back to Rivers. Yeah, he's playing very well. You can see the maturity in Phillip Rivers' game in the pocket. You know, it's the subtle movement when there's pressure. He doesn't break down his mechanics. He senses where the opening is, buys little time, allows Buster Davis to come clear. Very similar right here. Plants on that back foot. Nothing there. Steps up in the pocket. Once again, Buster Davis coming clear. Good poise in the pocket. Good awareness in the pocket. The subtle moves to throw the football. As five touchdown, the nine touchdown passes this year for Rivers gives him the NFL lead for three weeks. Jay Cutler in Denver has eight. Thomas Jones seeking space and finding it. Former Virginia back, his brother Julius had a big game for Seattle yesterday. Games about eight. Can I ask the unthinkable of you, Sure. George? Pressure on Brett Favre right here. Yes. National uh, I, audience yes. has yes. had a, a number of passes intercepted already. Yes. 
What's he supposed to do? <laughs> I, I need more than yes. I, I, yeah. You said you wanted short answers. Well, tonight, sometimes. Yeah. No, there's not no all the time. You know, this is what Brett Favre has been known to rally his football team when there have been big deficits. Now he's on a big stage. Can he do it? Second and two pass is complete for the first down. As it's taken out of bounds by Jericho Cotchery. You know, you see the turnovers that the Jets have made, guys, and it may answer the question that many Jet fans had. Why aren't you more open? Why did you run it three times on first and goal? We all expect Eric Mangini and his new quarterback and everybody to be ready to play at the highest level week one, and everything you guys talked about for a month might be true. It's just going to take time. Couldn't agree with you more, Mike. The 33. Blitz picked up. Good job to call it in by Kachery. He's going to gain about three and a half yards, and we'll get to the two-minute warning. I want to be able to answer that question when we come back from the perspective of a fan, why they expect it right now with Brett Favre. For everyone. The NFL is back on NASN and we're bringing you a live triple header. First up, the Vikings sail into Tennessee. Then the Cowboys host the Redskins and wrap up your football weekend with the Eagles taking on the Bears in Chicago. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. Thank <laughs> you. 